Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of Fire and Ice, issue number three. But it's so much more than that. If you are uh, listening on autoplay and you are like, I don't want to, I don't care. Um, I talked about recently, uh, the comic book industry, it's kind of collapsing and then settling and then collapsing. And right now we are in an era of collapse. So I don't just talk about one thing uh, because when there's a crisis, you don't say like, oh, we'll talk about the fires today and there's an earthquake and you talk about that tomorrow. Like you talk about everything. So, um, oh, and uh, first kill graphic, <coughs> <coughs> graphic novel. I just sound, sent out an update. It has been lettered. I have checked the letters. Uh, very minimal corrections. This is the smallest amount of corrections ever. It's like a couple of apostrophes, a couple of typos, and then a couple of thing <coughs> <coughs> things with uh, military jargon. And uh, you know how it has the asterisk and then it will say AO, area of operations, stuff like that. Uh, but this is so simple that all of the corrections can be done in one pass, which means we get to start assembling the print file for first kill this week. Very exciting. And here's the uh, higher resolution. I got to tell you, when, like, obviously I'm getting all the pages, obviously I've read the script, but when you see it lettered, that's when it is truly a comic book and it is so exciting. So um, now we are in the uh, video itself. So, um, as I've introduced myself in some other videos, uh, I say things five years before it is safe to say them. So, I'll say this now, and then in five years, Bill Sienkiewicz and Eric Larson and CBR.com can say it. The experiment to have gender parity, to have equal amounts of men and women in comics, specifically as writers, is a failure. Period, point blank, absolute, unmitigated failure. And the failure comes in uh, two parts. About 50% of the failure is Mean Girls, Whisper Networks, and the other 50% is shit like this. Wine aunts who know little to nothing about comics, but they know that, oh, a few years ago, Marvel movies became popular, so it's kind of... Uh, cute and quirky and fun to work in comics and they get handed these assignments they don't pitch for them they just get handed them and they turn out the exact same low stakes bullshit that they always do i uh, received a couple of emails uh the other day that kind of blew my mind with how um insightful they were uh so here they are one of them was talking about how, <coughs> <coughs> weirdly enough, even though things are in collapse in comics, it's the easiest time to work in comics, at least like getting yelled at by the boss. Like you're not going to get yelled at by the boss. In fact, you're not even going to be fired. They'll just wait until things get worse and worse and worse until they have to do mass layoffs and then they get rid of the people they actually wanted to get rid of for a while so whenever you see like 10 people get laid off they really just wanted to fire andy Curry, but if they just singled him out it would be a huge drama so they have to kind of like wait until things have gotten so bad that they also have to fire someone who they like for example mark chiarello and then another guy made a great freaking point. He said, uh, as Marvel leaned into being a female brand, it added more female management. Guys tend to combust and smooth things over. Women and gay guys are more likely to engage in reputation disparagement. So instead of creators doing things like quitting their mainstream job to start their own imprint, we get whisper networks. Instead of a culture racing to the top, we have a den of vipers trying to cling to whatever they got for as long as possible, which leads to stagnation. 
He basically said it, and I challenge you to find a counter argument. Men start companies, women start whisper networks. I've done a video before where I say, obviously tongue in cheek, why doesn't Mags and Heather and Vita and Joe Glass and Danny Lore and T. Franklin and all those people, why don't they start their own company? Because, you know, 60% of the population is gay and these are all very popular writers because they get hired so much, why don't they start their own company? Well, part of it is monkey branching. They just want to swing from one safe bet to another. One thing that their normie friends have heard of. Oh, I've heard of Marvel. I've heard of DC. IDW? Oh, 30 Days of Night? Yeah, I've heard of that. I've heard of Lock and Key. They don't want to let go of one thing their Facebook friends from high school have heard of until they can grab onto another thing. But one thing that never, ever crosses their mind is creating something of their own. Sasha from Casually Comics is going through the uh, seven stages of Canadian grief, just getting more and more frustrated at content that is, quote, made for her as a woman, but is always this baby-brained, tween sitcom, no-stakes bullshit like Fire and Ice, Welcome to Smallville. Why are they in Smallville? Because women who don't collect comics have heard of Smallville and they haven't heard of Fire and Ice. So we're going to get this kind of archy style, silly billy drawing and humor. As always with female led comics, there are way too many characters. This is issue three. They already have this many characters. Toxic men. Ha ha ha, he's so dumb. She told him to hold a sink and he wants to show off his strength. Stupid men. The worst fat auntie humor imaginable. Um, what if there was like a hunkasaurus rex and he went to a barber shop and then a lesbian gorilla gave him a haircut and she did like a really bad job. And they were like, ah, uh, yikes. And she's like, I'm still working. And then she got really angry. Wouldn't that be funny? No. What part of that was supposed to be funny? When he has the bad haircut and it, it looks like a bad haircut. Here's something that uh, someone in the comments pointed out. This is written for people with the mentality of an eight-year-old, but it's rated for people 13 and up. So you've just screwed up every part of everything. We get this awful squirrel girl type of humor with like a character whose name is Brain Butt. He has two brains instead of buttocks. Isn't that funny? No? What the fuck's wrong with you? It's, it's really funny. Your fattest and most childless aunt loves that joke. You fabulous weirdo. May the great Saint Stephanie Joanne Angelina Germanata bless you. That's Lady Gaga's real name. That's the joke. Joanne Starr keeps claiming that she grew up reading the Keith Giffen era, Justice League, the Bwahaha era, and yet she knows nothing about any of these characters. I think she's decided that Ambush Bug is Deadpool. So they invite Jimmy Olsen into the bathroom because, haha, that's funny, they do that in TV shows. And then he peeks in and says, What you up to, Jimster? Playing seven minutes in heaven with my lady, huh? You in here tickling Elmo? Oh, that's a very current pop culture reference. What is that, like 2,000 and... 2,000! Just 2,000! That's a pop culture reference from 23 years ago, Joanne. You in here tickling Elmo? Feeding the sea monkey? Painting some happy little trees? I'll deal with you later. Yes, please. That ambush bug. He loves his art therapy. Won't let anyone else near the oil paints. That's the joke. I had a very strange sensation while reading this. I kept feeling like I had accidentally skipped a page, which is difficult to do in a digital format, or that on the same page that there was a panel missing in between the other panels. Why are these characters fighting? Well, Joanne got a little bored and confused. And and decided she needed to spice things up. So wouldn't it be funny if a lesbian was hitting a prom queen 
with a frying pan because things that happen are funny. That's funny, right? No, Joanne, it's not. Nothing you've done in here is funny. We then cut back to everything being okay because holy shit, how many fucking characters are in this comic? And we got cat season, pet season, friend season. Oh my gosh, is that an apple pie? That's yumsies. Remember the scene where his uh, haircut looked like that and she said she wasn't done? I couldn't think of a better joke to end that joke, so she actually was done and she hasn't changed it. It's funny and he's happy for no reason. Remember that time Jimmy Olsen turned into a turtle? Okay, I've got four pages left and I don't know what to do with him, so he's going to turn into a turtle. Then he's going to be larger than the other characters. That's funny, right? When something is different, it's funny. And then the robot, remember the silly robot? He waters his nose like it's a plant, but it, but it isn't a plant. But plants are green and his nose is green. That's funny, right? My nieces and nephews laugh when I say stuff like this. Then they leave. And then the uh, lesbian's a cannibal because I'm, I'm telling you, literally all of this, it feels like there's a lot of miscommunication where Joanne is like, oh, cool, I'm writing a 10-page backup. She turns in a script for a 10-page backup. They're like, Joanne, this is the third issue of your miniseries. Did you forget? She's like, oh, uh, yeah, I did. Um, what if somebody got a haircut? Yeah, fine, fuck it, whatever, Joanne. You need to write a full issue. And then she's like, ah. How many pages is issue? I think it's like 17. She writes 17 and they're like, Joanne, you've got five more pages. And she's like, oh, uh, the lesbian is a cannibal. Plot twist. But uh, anyway, seriously, um, I see a lot of people coming up with ideas. I come up with ideas. No matter what you do is you need to say, no more women in comics simply because they're women or because they're a man pretending to be a woman. Everyone's gotta be here on merit or potential and retained based on sales. That's it. No more wine aunts, no more mean girls, no more hiring someone who can barely read but they check a lot of boxes so you give them a hundred swings at bat. No more of this. You can come up with this great plan but if you're still hiring people like this, it lowers everything and it just makes it deeply uncool there's nothing less cool than your childless aunt saying things are lit or something like that <laughs> or dabbing this is basically hillary clinton dabbing in the 2016 election anyway before i go first kill graphic novel link is in the description thanks for watching bye